In the previous tutorial, we have used some simple interface to display some local communication parameters, but that was not sufficient. In this video, we are going to see how to design an LVGL library compatible user interface using Square Line Studio and integrate the generated interface code with our firmware and let it interact with it in order to display more useful parameters and then use that interface to conduct a communication robustness test for two LA66 LoRaWAN modules exchanging dummy packets over LoRa wirelessly. We are going to discuss things in details today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is not only a professional and high quality printed circuit board manufacturer, but they also have CNC cutting, 3D printing, metal sheet fabrication, and injection molding services. So it's the right choice where you can get all your project components from one single place. And they are now having discount on four layer and six layer PCB manufacturing. So don't miss your chance. All right, so here we can see the user interface that we have designed using Square Line running on this ESP32 S3 development board with this uh, 1.9 inch 8 bit display. And as you can see right now, the ping count is being incremented around every two seconds because uh, this module, LA66 uh, LoRaWAN module, is trying to communicate with the surrounding devices. But since there is no device around, it's not getting any response. So the pong uh, is not being incremented. So now let's add uh, one LoRaWAN module to the network uh, to start the communication. So let me uh, plug this uh, USB adapter uh, LoRaWAN module to a power bank to start and initiate the communication. All right, so as you can see right now, the peer-to-peer -peer communication between the two of these devices uh, has been initiated. And now our main module has started to get uh, the Pong message from the USB adapter module. And here we have a timer that measures the communication time. Uh, and as you can see, the communication right now is quite fast. Uh, and we have the RSI from the last time. And here's the communication status LED. All right, so now in order to stop the communication, I'm going to plug this off. So our main module will not receive any Pong message. So this won't be incremented. And as you can see, these colors uh, turned into red. So there's no more ongoing communication. And now we have returned to our initial state. All right, so now let's have a communication robustness test. Uh, I'm having this module is plugged to a power bank. Uh, so once uh, this will start communicating, the counter will start and by doing that we can see if every Pong message is getting a response. So now let's start the communication. Alright. So now the communication has started and our timer is also started to measure the communication time. So now I'm going to put this module in another row uh, and see uh, how it goes. Notice how the RSI level has dropped, which is quite normal because uh, currently the USB adapter LoRa 1 module uh, is a bit far away from me. There are two walls between these two modules communicating. All right, so now we can see that two minutes uh, has passed and the modules is continuing to communicate. So now in order to stop the communication, I'm going to hold the reset button of this module. Yes, as you can see, uh, we have an equal number of ping and pong messages. That means that every sent pong message is being received and got a response from the other module, which means that the communication is quite uh, robust and no message is being lost over this wireless LoRa communication. So now it's time to jump into SquareLine Studio and see how I managed to design uh, this user interface for LA66 LoRa 1 module. All right, so here you can see the project settings that I'm using. Here you can see the screen uh, resolution with uh, color depth of 16 bit swap. Uh, and this will be the destination of the files exported from this program. So yeah, let's have a look at the user interface design and how it's done. 
All right, so here are the objects that I'm using. I'm using only one screen uh, and a bunch of labels, uh, panels that uh, can be shaped as you want. Uh, slide in order, this is used for uh, demonstrating the RSI level. Uh, so uh, in order to add an object, all you need to do is to press here and you add it from the inspector and here I can write whatever I want. And then of course it's possible to change its position but of course I prefer to use the coordinates so I can uh, put them accordingly. Of course it's possible also to change some other parameters like changing the color, let's put it to red and modify the font uh, to make the uh, text a uh, bit larger like this. All right, anyways, so the slider can be added the same way, like this, and the size can be modified, just like that, and the color and its background can be modified as well. Uh, also, there's this play button. So this will allow you to simulate the interface and see how it's going to react uh, with the user in the real-world application. Okay, so let's close that. Uh, I have also text area. Uh, which contains uh, a text inside it so let's create one from uh, scratch here it is yes so uh, first of all uh, I would like to uh, remove the border uh, of the object and I can do this from the main style and then I go to the border uh, put it to none and then of course I can change the uh, text area background uh, color uh, just from here uh, change the color, select that one so I can have similar colors just like that of course I can modify the size uh, just like that and I can change the radius so here it's square uh, if I wanted to make it uh, like circle it will be like that yes uh, anyways, uh, I can also uh, change the color of the text that will be written uh, inside this text area uh, just from here. So I wanted to make it uh, green. Alright, so now uh, I can add my text to it. But of course first let me adjust the uh, text alignment. So whenever I write to the text area, uh, the text will appear right at the middle so let's make it centered and now from the level I can add my text uh, I can put any number like this okay so this is how I created these two uh, text boxes alright so now let me show you how I have created this uh, timer uh, as a panel and then I will remove the border change its color change the radius make it round oh I forgot that I need to make it uh, green just like this color and then I can make a copy of it from here so now I have two panels then I change this color one color to that one and I make it smaller put it at the center I can actually uh, put that uh, panel object inside this one so now uh, when I move the larger one uh, bo both of them uh, will move so they act as one object alright so let's adjust it to be uh, rounded so now let's add a text to it put it inside this panel so now this whole thing uh, will act as one object uh, change the text alright so now the text can be green yeah and that's it so now let's remove that because I have it already uh, now let me show you how I have integrated uh, this interface to the existing code I have so after finishing everything up we need to export uh, our file so after exporting the user interface files uh, you will have uh, two headers and two source files one is the user interface and you are going to have all the initializations of the object that we have created uh, within the uh, square line user interface design and also we will have the helpers in order to modify the values uh, of that uh, objects so it's possible to you know uh, change the slider value or change the text 
so uh, for that purpose, uh, these uh, functions can be used. Uh, and of course, in order to get everything working properly, you need to integrate LVGL library with your project. Uh, I've done that in a separate tutorial. You can have a look at it. I will put a video link regarding LVGL library integration. Uh, you can find it from the card above. All right, so now I suppose that the font color is more clear to you guys. So here you can see the files that we have exported from uh, Squarelines Studio. I have integrated them to my code with a simple modification where I've used dedicated screen uh, to show the interface that we have designed and I passed it uh, through this initialization function. So to be able to use the interface that we have designed using Squarelines Studio, we need to call this function inside our code. And I've used this function in the LVGL demo layer and we have it right over here with the third screen passed to it. So by doing so, I can have both the interface that I have designed before without Square Line Studio and with the new one uh, added in a new page, which is quite practical. So with this step, we have managed uh, to integrate uh, our design into our code. So having our design running on the display, we need to make use of it. So we need to transfer some data that we are collecting to the interface. And this is done in the main layer. So in the system logger task uh, that we have discussed in a previous tutorial, I've added this uh, LoRa packet detect uh, where I can identify the packet received from the LA66 uh, LoRa1 module over UART and according to that I can let my MCU take a different action. So if the packet received is containing the RSI value, uh, I extract uh, that value from the received packet and then send uh, the extracted value to the slider so I can demonstrate the RSI value on my interface. And of course, if the MCU receives the RSI packet, this means that the communication has been initiated and I can modify the color of the communication status panel and the timer panel to indicate that the communication has started. And here's the action of the timeout packet where the color of the panels is turned into red. And of course, last but not least, the ping pong send and ping pong receive. So first we check if the received packet is a ping or pong. And then according to that, a timer is incremented and after that uh, it's turned into a string to be able to print it on the screen uh, using these uh, functions and by doing that I can control the counters uh, of the interface. Of course keep in mind that the system logger task uh, run using uh, semaphore so every time a packet is received a semaphore is given from the UART reception uh, task uh, so this task uh, will run right after that and the received packet will be used and parsed according to its containing data. And at the end of the day, of course, we should not forget the timer handling uh, part and we have it over here. So when the communication over LoRa is active, uh, this part is uh, being executed. Uh, we have the sprint if function here taking two parameters. One of them is the minutes and the other one is the seconds. So this string will be made out, out of this data uh, and put inside this uh, buffer and then it will be passed to be written to this level uh, on our interface. And of course the handling part of the seconds and the minutes uh, is done inside this function and of course they are dependent on the system tech value. Uh, and when the communication is not active, uh, the timer is reset just like this. So yes, this brings me to the end of this tutorial. All the materials demonstrated in this tutorial will be shared on my GitHub repository. And now I'm going to upload the interface that we have designed together using Squareline Studio so you can make use of it and play with it. Uh, so please like this video, share it, and tell your friends about useful electronics. And stay tuned. See you next time.